Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam, October, November 2022, paper 63. Let's start it. Question 1. Hydrogen chloride is a colorless gas. It is soluble in water and denser than air. It can be made by reacting sodium chloride with concentrated sulfuric acid. Here we have a diagram to represent the apparatus that the teacher used to make hydrogen chloride gas and to measure the volume of the gas. Name the items labeled A and B. A, of course, is the conical flask containing the concentrated sulfuric acid and B is a test tube which contains sodium chloride. Describe how the reaction is started after the apparatus has been set up. We can start the reaction just by tilting the flask or swirling the flask so we can mix sodium chloride with sulfuric acid. So the reaction can be started by tilting or swirling the flask. A student suggests that the gas collected and the volume can be measured using a measuring cylinder as shown here in the diagram. Explain why the volume of the gas collected cannot be measured using this method. It is mentioned here at the beginning of the question that hydrogen chloride gas is a colorless gas. So, if you collect the gas using measuring cylinder, the volume of the gas cannot be seen on the scale of the measuring cylinder. So, we cannot measure the volume of the gas because hydrogen chloride is a colorless gas. Complete the diagram to show how the hydrogen chloride gas can be collected and the volume can be measured. So we will draw a diagram represent gas syringe where the volume of the gas can be measured because the gas syringe has a scale where the gas collected can be measured. Hydrogen chloride is a toxic gas and concentrated sulfuric acid is corrosive. Give one safety precaution that should be taken when working with hydrogen chloride gas because it's toxic, so we have to absorb the hydrogen chloride fume using a fume cupboard. Give one safety precaution that should be taken when working with concentrated sulfuric acid, wearing gloves because sulfuric acid is corrosive. Question 2. Student investigate the rate of reaction between sodium metabisulfite and potassium iodate at different temperatures. We will make five experiments at five different temperatures. The first experiment we will use 70 cm cube of potassium iodate and then we will add 5 cm cube of aqueous starch. After that we will add another 5 cm cube of sodium metabisulfite. After adding sodium metabisulfite, a stop clock was started and we will mix or stir the mixture until the color change was seen. Then we will stop the clock and measure the final temperature of the mixture. Finally, the beaker was rinsed for, with distilled water prepared for the second experiment. We will repeat the same steps, adding first potassium I date then the starch. Before adding sodium metabisulfite, we will heat the solution till 35 degrees Celsius. After reaching this temperature, we can add sodium metabisulfite and start the clock again. Uh, measure the time needed for the color change. After that, measure the final temperature of the mixture. We will repeat the experiment again, but we will heat till 40 degrees Celsius. And in experiment 4, we will heat till 45 degrees Celsius. And finally, experiment 5, we will heat about 50 degrees Celsius. Use the thermometer diagram and the stop clock diagram to complete the table. Here we have the thermometer diagram for the 5 experiment. The first one, as we can see, the temperature is 19. Then second, 34. The third experiment is 41.5 and then we have 46. Finally, in experiment 5, we have temperature 52. Then we will measure the time needed for the color change reading the stop clock diagram. Here we have 
the small circle represent minutes so we have one minute and 31 second total will be 91 second because we have to measure the time in seconds so we will add 60 plus 31 this will be 91 seconds the second experiment we have only seconds so it is 54 seconds and here we have 43 seconds that is shown here 43 experiment 4 we have 36 seconds and finally in experiment 5 we have 31 seconds here complete the suitable scale on the y-axis and plot the result from experiment 1 to 5 on the grid draw a curve of best fit through your points here first we have to draw, to make a scale for the y-axis the time taking for the color change so we will refer back here the time the highest reading here is 91 and the smallest one is 31 so we will start here from 0 20 40 60 80 and 100 so we cover all the readings here until 91 then we will draw a curve of best fit using the temperature and the time taking for the color change our curve will be the red one here i'll draw uh, i already draw a curve of best fit through all points then did use which experiment has the fastest rate of reaction of course it will be experiment five because the color change take the least time or the smallest time to happen so experiment five has the fastest rate of reaction from your graph did use the time taking for the mixture to change color at a temperature of 60. so from your graph you have to show your work on the grid if we heat till 60 what will be the time taking so here at 60 we will draw a vertical line till mid the red curve and measure here how many seconds needed for the color change as we can see here it's 24 seconds here so your answer will be the time needed that were the time taking for the color change 24 seconds experiments are often repeated and the results compared to check that they are reliable suggest why here it is difficult to do this experiment to do this for this experiment meaning that we cannot repeat the experiment so many times take the average to to make reliable results as we can see here the heating is about 40 about 45 about 50 so it is difficult to adjust or to get exactly the same temperature each time if we repeat the experiment it will be difficult to adjust or to get the exact the same temperature each time repeating the experiment suggest why the aqueous potassium iodate is warmed before the aqueous sodium metabisulfite is added rather than heated after we add sodium metabisulfite of course heating should be before adding sodium metabisulfite because if we add sodium sodium metabisulfite it will be difficult to adjust the temperature because the temperature is increasing or changing during the reaction as the sodium metabisulfite react with sodium iodate the temperature kept increasing so it, is, it will be difficult to adjust the initial temperature of the reaction polystyrene cup can be used instead of a beaker in this experiment explain the advantage of transferring the warm potassium iodate to polystyrene cup rather than leaving it in the beaker so we will heat it first in the beaker then transfer it, uh, transfer it to a polystyrene cup because the polystyrene cup is insulated so it will reduce the heat loss and the temperature will be more accurate suggest why it is not a good idea to put aqueous potassium iodate in a polystyrene cup before it's warmed means warming it in the polystyrene cup of course it will not be a good idea because the polystyrene cup will melt sketch on the grid the graph obtained 
When the experiments are repeated using aqueous potassium iodate at a higher concentration, of course, increasing the concentration will increase the rate of reaction. So all experiment will be uh, will take less time for the color change. So here on the grad, we have to draw a curve below the original one, and we will label it. Of course, we will label a higher concentration. All the experiment will will take less time for the color change to happen. So we will have another curve, which is in the light blue color below the original one. Then we will go to question three. Solid N and solution O were analyzed. Solid N is zinc carbonate. We will first make a test on solid N. Adding dilute sulfuric acid to a boiling tube containing solid N and any gas produced with tested. So the tube containing zinc carbonate, then we will add hydrochloric acid. So the products here will be zinc chloride and carbon dioxide and water. So um, here is the equation for the reaction between zinc carbonate and hydrochloric acid. The gas produced, of course, is carbon dioxide. So the observation will be effervescence of a colorless gas. The gas was tested, so we will test carbon dioxide gas with lime water, and lime water will be turned milky or cloudy. The mixture format in the boiling tube A, so the mixture format contain, as we uh, saw from the equation, the mixture format contains zinc chloride and we will filter it removing any uh, solid zinc carbonate left and the filtrate collected this was solution b so we will take solution of zinc chloride to complete a test on solution b solution b was divided into two approximately equal portion into two tested tubes the first portion we will add sodium hydroxide gradually than in excess so adding sodium hydroxide to solution of zinc chloride will form zinc hydroxide which is white precipitate and because zinc hydroxide is amphoteric so it will dissolve in excess sodium uh, hydroxide so the observation will be white precipitate dissolve in excess for the second portion we will add ammonia gradually and then in excess again the observation will be white precipitate dissolve in excess ammonia then we will make tests on solution o first flame test was was carried for solution a o sorry solution o we have lilac flame and this is the color characteristic color for potassium ions so this solution contains the cation potassium then the remaining solution O was divided into three portions the first portion we will add universal indicator paper dipped into the first portion and the universal indicator color turned purple that means we have alkaline solution so the solution O is an alkali because the color is purple then for the second portion we will add dilute nitric acid and a few drops of silver nitrate were added and here we have no change silver nitrate is a reagent used to test for halide ions chloride bromide and iodide so here we have no change no change so no halide ions present then for the third portion we will add copper sulfate drop wise and then in excess to the third portion we will have a blue precipitate which remain in excess so uh, we have an alkaline solution containing potassium so it's potassium hydroxide because it has potassium ions when potassium hydroxide react with copper sulfate that means a blue precipitate will form it of copper hydroxide and this blue precipitate remain in excess that indicates that solution O is an alkaline solution, potassium hydroxide. 
So here, the first question, we will deduce the pH of solution O because it's potassium hydroxide, a very strong alkali, so the pH will be 14. Identify solution O, as we said, it's potassium hydroxide. Question 4, planning, investigation, or writing experiment. Many fizzy drinks contain phosphoric acid as the only acid present, and phosphoric acid reacts with sodium hydrogen carbonate to make carbon dioxide gas. Sodium hydrogen carbonate is the formula NaHCO3. We have two fizzy drinks, value coke and cola cola are two fizzy drinks which contain phosphoric acid as the only acid. Plan an investigation to find which of these fizzy drinks contain the highest concentration of the acid. In your answer, you should include how your results will tell you that this drink contains the highest concentration of phosphoric acid. You are provided with uh, samples of the bo both fizzy drinks and solid hydrogen, sodium hydrogen carbonate and common laboratory apparatus. So we will compare between the two drinks which one contained the highest concentration of phosphoric acid according to the volume of the carbon dioxide gas produced, so measuring the volume of carbon dioxide gas produced for both drinks, that will be the point of comparison. And we will add excess sodium hydrogen carbonate to ensure that all the phosphoric acid react and we will collect the carbon dioxide gas produced from reacting all the phosphoric acid. Then uh, we will we have to make sure that using the same volume of both fizzy drinks so using the measuring cylinder we will add a known volume of the first drink in a conical flask then this conical flask is connected by to um, connected to a gas syringe using a delivery tube we will add an excess sodium hydrogen carbonate and close the bunk of the flask quickly and we will wait until the fizzing stops mean that the reaction has finished we collect all the carbon dioxide gas produced we will record the volume of the gas and then repeat the experiment using the same volume of the other fizzy drinks collect the uh, volume of carbon dioxide gas produced and we will compare between the volume of the two gases the drink that produced the largest volume of the gas has the highest concentration of phosphoric acid. Here we come to the end of our exam. Comment down below if you have any question. Like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive all the updates. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.